Hallelujah. Come on, everybody on your feet this morning. We serve a great God. My, how he has moved in our 9 o'clock service. God, we're believing you to pour out your spirit mightily right now. In the name of Jesus, everybody put your hands together. Oh, God, we give you praise. Come on, let your level of expectancy be up here today. Hi.
can it be? Is you gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. Amazing love, how can it be? Is you gave everything for me. You gave everything. Aren't you glad he set you free? I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you. Because of your amazing love. Amazing love, how can it be? Jesus, you gave, you gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. Take my chains, my chains, my chains, my heart was free. and eternal life with him. We worship you. We worship you.
to put those words back up there. When you call, I will follow. Some of you may not know it, but the reason you're here is because God is calling you. You feel a drawing, you feel a tugging, you can put you can put that in numerous phrases, but bottom line is the Lord's calling you and here's the here's the here's where the rubber meets the road because he has chosen you 
John 15 says, you did not choose me, Jesus said, but I have chosen you. Because he has chosen you and he has called you and he's drawing you, you and I will never, ever, ever be satisfied until we do what the next line says. Until we surrender all at the cross. That's where the rub comes. That's where the tug comes. Am I going to surrender everything to Him? Or am I going to hold on? Today, in the 9 o'clock service, and it seems to be carrying over into this service, a real theme is surrendering everything to Jesus. Saying, Lord, I just give it all. I just surrender it all. I just let go of everything. He's setting hearts free. Shackles and chains are dropping today. Lead weights that you've carried around are falling today as you surrender all. But you have to surrender it. You have to let it go. You have to say, I can't carry this. I don't want to carry this. And even some things that you might be holding on to that you just need to say, Lord, I just let it go because I belong to you and I want you more than anything in my life. So I want us just to take a moment to worship him right now and to say to him, Lord, I belong to you and I surrender everything. I just, I, 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 let, I let go of it. I want my heart to be free, my life to be free. I, I sense that you might be calling me, you're drawing me closer, and I don't want anything to hinder my walk and my relationship with you. I don't want anything to hinder me drawing closer to you. So Lord, I surrender it all, I give it to you. Can you right now do that in this place? Can you just take a moment and say, Lord, I just, I come this morning asking you to move in me deeper. If you're calling me, Lord, I, I, I believe you are, and I just come to the cross surrendering it all. And I let go of it. I let go of it. I let go of it. Lord, hear that prayer that people are praying to you right now. Hear that prayer, God, that people are praying and releasing, releasing things to you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We surrender all to you today. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Be Lord and master of everything. Lord and master of all my life, my heart. In the name of Jesus. We worship you today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. All of my hope is in. Jesus Christ, take my life, take all of me. I love you, all of my hope is in you. 
Jesus Christ, take my life, take all of me. And I love you, all of my hope is in. Jesus Christ, take my life, take all of me. Sing that as a prayer to him once again. Come on. Sing, I love you, all of my hope is in you. Jesus Christ. Take my life, take all of me. Cause I love you, all of my hope is in you. Jesus Christ. Surrender everything. Surrender it all to him today. Cause I love you. All of my hope is in you. Jesus Christ, take my life. Take all of me. Take all of me. your hands all over this building right now and say, Lord, I surrender everything to you today. I ask you to take all of me. I ask you to take all of me today, everything. I release it, offer it willingly to you, God. My life belongs to you. And I surrender all, Lord, and I ask you just to move in my life, work in my life, God. Be Lord and Master of everything. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you right now that you're hearing in this prayer. That God, people are releasing things to you, God. They're letting go. They're releasing and letting go, Lord. And you're taking over, taking charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just hold that. Broke the night like the sun, healed my heart with your great love. How many of you know he healed our heart with his great love? Any trouble I couldn't bear, you lifted me upon your shoulders. How many know he lifted us on his shoulders? Love that is stronger, love that covers sin and takes the weight of the world I love you all of my hope is in you Jesus Christ take my life take all of 
one more time. Can you sing that? I love you. All of my hope is in you. I love you. All of my hope is in you. Jesus Christ, take my life. Jesus Christ, take my life. Take all of me. As you walk with God and you desire to grow in the Lord, that's where the rub's going to come, folks, when you get to this place of taking all of me. That's when it's the best. That's when Christianity is at its best, when you've given all to Him. Amen? So, Lord, I pray that you would hear that song as a prayer and that you would take everything. We've surrendered it today, we've released it, and we believe it's yours today. Thank you that you're helping us. Thank you, God, that you're encouraging us today. Thank you, Lord, that you are in charge and you are in control. And Lord, we give you that. We give you our lives today. We give you this service. Have your way with everything, God, that pertains to us. For you know how to handle it better than we do. You know what the outcome should be better than we know what it should be. And so, God, we just release everything to you. May it come out the way you want it to so that your name would be glorified. Your name would be praised. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing right now and what you're going to do in the rest of this service today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And let everybody say a good amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. Our children, grades one through five, are headed to the Family Life Center next door for Kid Life. While they're headed that way, would you take a moment and turn and greet somebody? Stand on your feet, turn and shake somebody's hand and welcome them to Life Source Church today.
Friday, May the 4th, and Saturday, May the 5th, is the UP Conference. You don't want to miss it, because it's spectacular from this view. Ushers, I want you to pass out those little pieces of paper to every person in the pew right now. I can't see if you're doing it, but I sure hope you are, because my neck can't handle this for much longer. Great stuff. We are hosting a UP conference here. It's time to think differently about church leadership, about leadership in general. Forget the norm, think UP. We've invited a lot of area churches and pastors to come. Friday night will be a service, be an impartation service. We believe the fire of God is going to be here in a mighty way, and we're going to pray for people, everybody who comes, for their leadership. On Saturday, there are going to be big idea general sessions, brain teaser breakout sessions, high octane no limits question and answer lunch, and uh, you'll walk away with an up survival kit and great materials. Today is IRS day. April 15th, okay, but it's not Internal Revenue Service Sunday, it's Important Registration Sunday, and so that's what the paper is that you have, it's a, an intent to register, it's a registration form to give us an idea of how many people will come. Now, no matter what you do in ministry or even in the secular world, if it involves some aspect of leadership, you will benefit from this conference because we deal with principles from God's Word. Has everybody received a sheet? Those of you that haven't, raise your hands because we got some right down here. Ushers, if we could come down to the front here and get the folks here in this section, get them some more. Thank you very, very much. And what we need you to do, so we will be prepared for it, because we have to prepare manuals. We have to prepare all the material. There's a lunch on Saturday that um, is included in the cost. Uh, we need to know your intentions on being there. So if you'll take that sheet, it's very simple. You can see where you just kind of put your name and check off um, being there. It'll be your way of registering today. And you can go to our events team rep. They, they wear a red t-shirt. You can register with them out in the lobby or right at the information center. There's also an up registration table in the lobby. If you take a look at that, it has, it gives you some idea of what's going to happen that day. Friday night service, all day Saturday, Saturday lunch with our, with our staff here. It's an open forum, question and answer. Um, that's always a really, really good time that we have, and you will receive a whole lot out of it. As a matter of fact, I give you a money back guarantee. If you don't think it was worth the 20 bucks, I'll just give it back to you. It's worth a whole lot more than that though. So I hope that you'll be here for those Friday night and Saturday, but we need you to turn in that paper today, so don't take that lightly. And after the service today, Lauren Fletcher. Lauren, wave your hand. She's on the worship team, stands all the way on the end on this side. She's going to be meeting with those of you that would like to help volunteer to help us with the setup, with the decorations, the registration, and the transitions of greeting right after this service, a very brief but important meeting. And that meeting will be in the Friends Center, the Family Life Center next door. So and downstairs on the bottom level, right next to the gym. There's kind of a dining area there. That's where the meeting will take place. If you're able to help us with that, please, please see her immediately after the service. Uh, I need to make this announcement for those of you that are go interested in membership and you've signed up for that. Um, we have information packets that you need to pick up today because membership is next Sunday morning um, and you need to fill out this information and bring it with you to membership. So it's very important on your way out at the information center in the center of the lobby pick up that packet 
so that you'll have the necessary information filled out ahead of time before you come on Sunday. A lot of other things happening. Maybe you can pick up, if we still have some left over, the April newsletter, things that are coming up. I don't want to bog down the service with all of that. But there are a lot of wonderful things happening and taking place. Um, next month is Pentecost Sunday, the very last Sunday of the month, April the 27th. We're hosting a, um, a camp meeting here the week before that, April 20th through the 23rd. But um, what we want to do is really pray and seek the Lord um, between now and May 27th. On May 27th on Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to speak a, a special message about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what that means, uh, what Acts 2 means. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one place in one accord. It came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. What does that mean? What is that? Is that relevant for us today? What is the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Do we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do we need to speak in tongues? That Sunday, May 27th, is going to be an incredible day, uh, and I believe the Lord's going to pour out His Spirit mightily in this house. But we want to encourage you to pray. Uh, between now and then for just a mighty outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost Sunday and of course between now and then. Pastor Mary Rosenberger, Mary, stand if you would. She is heading up a, a, a brigade of a thousand intercessors from all over the Delmarva, D.C. region to cry out for a fresh outpouring of the Spirit and that God would visit us in an unprecedented way. So we've got a postcard uh, some postcards with corresponding prayers, a daily reminder which you can pick up in the lobby immediately following the service today, okay? That up piece of paper, up conference registration form, today if you would, as you exit the sanctuary, if you would take that piece of paper and place it on the table where that up conference uh, display is, that would be very, very helpful for us, okay? Let me share with you... Um, some scripture from this past week's reading. Uh, it's a transition from the book of Deuteronomy to the book of Joshua. Moses passes away and the leadership baton is handed to Joshua. And so we begin the book of Joshua this week and there's some really, really powerful things that, um, that take place. And I just want to share them with you, a couple things. In the beginning of the book of Joshua, I felt, I felt some things were there that, that are really um, some words that some people needed to hear today. Joshua 1. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, which is the one-year Bible that I'm taking my devotions from. Somebody listen to this. Somebody get this. Joshua 1, 5, in the New Living Translation, the very last sentence, God says to Joshua, I will not fail you or abandon you. Isn't that powerful? You need to know that today, that God will not fail you. He will not fail you. He will not fail you. Failure is not in his vocabulary. He will not fail you. It is not in his character nor in his ability to do so. He will not fail you. Never seen God fail anyone. And he will not abandon you. Some of you have been abandoned in times of your life. Maybe when you were younger, maybe a parent abandoned you. Maybe a spouse as you grew older abandoned you. Maybe sometime along the journey, friends abandon you. It's good to know that the Lord is not like people. 
different places through Scripture, we are told God is not a man. Thank you, God. That means He's different. He will not abandon us. Thank God for His faithfulness. Then um, in, uh, in chapter 1, again, I'm leading up to something, but chapter 1 again, verse number 12, says the Lord your God is giving you a place of rest. I, 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 when I read that, I wrote in my Bible here, a place of rest. I believe this is a significant word for us right now. And then down in verse 15, he's talking to the tribes, Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, who wanted to stay on the other side of the Jordan because they loved the land there. And Moses challenged them and said, you can't stay in this land until your brothers have possessed their land. And they said, okay, we'll go over, we'll fight with them. And, and Joshua is kind of uh, reiterating that promise and, and telling them that you're going to stay with the rest of the children of Israel in verse 15 until the Lord gives them rest as he has given you rest and until they too possess the land. And I wrote here in my Bible, you know you've possessed what God has promised you when you have rest. Possessed what God wants you to possess when you can go. Now, why do you come to that place of rest? Because God's good and He knows that you need a break before the next battle begins. You know, my son, he's sitting over there now, but he plays the keyboard over here, and I told him. This past week, he and I had a, had a dis discussion because my son, you know, he's 17 and he, he's understanding spiritual warfare and understanding battles and, you know, needing to overcome and be victorious and things of that nature. And I told him, I said, I said, son, you need to understand something early on, okay? There will be battles throughout the rest of your life. He said, Dad, am I going to have to fight all my life? And I said, yep. Because that's the reality of it, isn't it? But God gives you places of rest when you've possessed what He has promised. And the temptation is to stay there. Because that's what that's what Peter wanted to do when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration and Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration and Peter woke up from his stupor and he said, Jesus, let's build booths here and just stay right here because this is a good place. How many of you know when you reach a good place, you just want to go, ah, break out the sunglasses, give me the tea. But hear me, folks, you know it all too well. God gives you a rest and a break, but there's still another battle to face. There's another victory to be won. There's another devil to be beaten. There's another victory to be had and possess. And it's going to be like that until you breathe your last breath, if you want to continue to grow. Now, if you want to stop and stagnate and just stay at the place that you're in, you can just hang out there and say, I don't want any more stuff okay and you'll you'll stay there okay you'll go to heaven but you'll get there and you're going to come to a realization that God had a whole lot more for you but you just didn't want to go on you just didn't want to move on okay and listen you can read the Bible God's greats they went through all of that stuff they went through all that Elijah came to the place one day where he said God just kill me I'm ready to go I'm ready to die. And the Lord visited him and gave him a supernatural meal. And he was able to go in the strength of what God gave him and move on to the next place. Hear me, folks. 
God has a next place for every single one of you in this building and every one of you watching this webcast, every one in the balcony and the main floor. There is a next place. Don't get satisfied with where you are now because there's another place. Okay? And the Bible characterizes heaven by using the words eternal rest. You'll get to lay it all down one day. You'll get to lay down the battle fatigues, and you'll get to lay down the battle armor. You'll get to lay down the battle weapons, and one day you'll be forever at rest. But it ain't this day. It's not now. There's too much to do in this life, okay? It's short. Just get in the battle mindset and mentality and get on with it. Are you hearing me? But if you're at a place of rest right now, enjoy it. Thank God for it, because God knows that we need that. This place that God wants to bring us to. They're getting ready to cross over the Jordan. That was a physical barrier for them to get to where God wanted them to get to. And um, they needed to cross over the Jordan. And, and I read in chapter 4, verse number 19, you know the story about the crossing of the Jordan? God instructed them how to do that, have the priests carry the ark. When their feet dip into the water, of the Jordan, that's when it's going to cross, that's when the waters are going to part. See, some people in life, they wait for the waters to part before they get their feet wet. Doesn't happen that way, folks. You got to get wet first, okay? Get wet first, then something will happen. But don't wait for something to happen, and then you're going to move. You move first. You move, God moves. Listen to this principle. I'm just going to teach. I'm, you know, I may be preaching right now. This may be it. This may be the whole ball of wax. So we're going to follow the Holy Spirit. But I want you to get this. Earth moves first. Then heaven moves. Some people have it the other way around. They wait for God to do something then they respond. No, God waits for you to do something, then He responds. They had to get wet before God would separate the waters. Pastor, give me Bible for that. Let me give you Bible. Let me give you Bible for the earth moves first, then heaven moves. Jesus gave this teaching in the New Testament. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What is he saying? If earth will do her part first, then heaven will respond and put a stamp on it and will back it up. Okay? See, that, it takes faith to do something and to move somewhere in which you're not seeing anything happen. But if you don't move, heaven isn't going to move. If you don't pray, heaven isn't going to come. If you don't step out, heaven isn't going to show up. You and I need to take the initiative and then God will respond to that. Let me give you another, let me give you another example. Give you another example. And I, I could just go through the scriptures. Well, I could spend the rest of the time with you doing this. But hear me. Listen to this. Somebody gave me this word in the first service. They felt it was for the folks here at the church. Uh, because in the 9 o'clock service, there was, there was a move of, of, and a word that came forth about God healing people. And, and I, I gave... Uh, an example that sometimes there's a connection between what is happening internally inside of us and what's happening physically. 
And the medical community in our present day has backed that up. They, they, they've said that over and over again, that what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your heart can really affect your, your, your physical being. Okay? There's ample studies that have been done on that to support that. But the, but the idea here is that what's going on inside can really affect how you're doing physically. Now, now, stress is a big part of that. My wife and I, because of what she's been through, we have gone through a lot of research and a lot of study about the effects of stress. That's an internal thing. How you handle difficulties, respond to problems, respond to situations. Do you do so with anxiety or are you able to handle that and give it to God and walk in peace and still maintain the peace of God when things are happening and going on? Because stress releases things in your body that are not good. Okay? So, again, it's the internal affecting the external right okay and so the word that somebody gave me in the in the beginning in the in the first service the end of it was you know pastor i really feel like the lord gave me this this passage from the book of kings about naaman and that you know he how many of you don't know who Naaman was, because I need to see where I need to go with this. Just to go, you're not you're not saying I'm stupid or I'm ignorant. You just you just don't know. That's all. Okay, Naaman was a commander of the Syrian army, who were enemies of Israel. Okay, but in Naaman's household, she he had a servant girl who was Jewish. She was from Israel. And she was serving Naaman and his wife, his family, and Naaman had leprosy. And the servant girl said to Naaman, said, there is a prophet in Israel that I think can help you. If you can get to him, he'll help you. I believe he'll, he can help you. So he ends up going to the prophet and... Uh, wanting to be released of his leprosy. And when he arrives to the prophets, coming near the prophet's house, Elisha doesn't even come out to address him. He sends messengers out to tell him that what he needs to do is he needs to go and dip in the Jordan River seven times. And if he will do that, he'll be healed. Well, Naaman... Being the commander, he says, I thought for sure, being who I am, that this prophet of God would come out and address me, number one. Number two, aren't the rivers of Syria much greater than the rivers in Israel? Uh, and he's asking me to dip in the Jordan River. And his point being that Everything about Syria and him being the commander was greater than the things in Israel. And he had an arrogance and a pride that prevented him from being healed. And the person who gave me that word in, in the first service said, Pastor, I think that somebody needs to realize that if they'll just humble themselves before the Lord, that their pride is hindering them from receiving what God has for them, okay? So anyway, I'll give that to you. But let me go on with the story. So the, the, the army, the, part, the, the, the leaders that came with Naaman, that accompanied him, said to him, Master, if he would have told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Why don't you, and, and in essence, they were saying, we've come all this way. Why don't you just try it? Okay. So he goes to the Jordan River, and he dips. Okay. And he does it seven times. Now, here's, what I'm, here's the point I'm trying to get across to you. Okay. 
after he dips, he comes out the seventh time, and his leprosy is gone. And he's healed. And the point that I want to make to you is again illustrate that earth moves first, then heaven responds. Okay? Earth does something, and then God responds to that. And I want to say to you folks, listen to me. Don't take a back seat and be complacent and just wait for God to do all these things. Because God is waiting for you to step forth. God is waiting for you to exhibit faith. God is waiting for you to move. God's waiting for you to dip. God's waiting for you to bind something. You know, some of us, we are going through things and we're wondering, well, why doesn't God stop this? Why doesn't God, why, why is this happening? And you haven't even prayed about it. And what I was going to open up with you today is I was going, you know, we came last Sunday, we had Easter. I preached a special message revolving around Easter. By the way, I had a lot of comments, a ton of comments on that message. I think you can pick it up in the lobby after the service. But I wanted to revisit today what I had talked about weeks ago, the power of prayer in the early church. And I was going to open up with that passage in James chapter 4, which says, you have not because you ask not. You see, the reason some of us aren't, aren't experiencing certain things is because we haven't even asked. We just, I don't know, we, we, we live with this thought that God's just going to do it. He knows about it, so he's just going to do it. But God has chosen to operate in the earth in response to prayer. In response to asking, in response to petition, when you worship, God moves. When you give, God moves. When you speak, God moves. When you bind, God binds in, in heaven, see? And some of us haven't come to the place where we have bound certain things on earth that God may bind them in the heavens, and we've not loosed certain things on earth that they may be loosed in heaven. So when you are experiencing an attack or a difficulty in your life, you need to take authority over that. Okay? You need to bind that, if you will. Okay? Pastor, how do you do that? If I'm experiencing opposition of some sort or an attack, I try to get the mind of the Lord as to what is that. But I will address it spiritually because I believe that there are spiritual forces. When I read God's Word, I understand that there are spiritual forces at work behind earthly things in this earth. Okay? So I will address it spiritually. I will address the attack spiritually and I will say, I bind you. I treat it with a personality, if you will, because it may be demonic. It, 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 it may come from a demonic assignment that's been launched against you or me. So I, I take authority over that, and I say, as a believer in Jesus Christ, I bind this in the name of Jesus. I command it to be, I'll, I'll address all kinds of things to it. I'll command it to be paralyzed. I'll command it to be cast out, to be driven from me. And I'll ask the Lord to put it at bay. And then I, I always pray, and when I'm dealing with something like that, I always say, God, for I believe your word, that you put a hedge of protection around me, that the enemy cannot penetrate that hedge, that, God, you have something surrounding me that the enemy can't just attack at will. So, Father, I, according to your word, I bind it on earth. Now may it be bound in heaven. And then whatever it is that's coming against me, then I want to loose the opposite of that. You want to release the opposite of what that is that's coming against you. Okay? So if it's sickness, you want to release health. If it's financial struggle, then you want to release prosperity. If it's an attack against your mind and your thoughts, then you want to release purity in your thoughts. Are, are, do you understand what I'm saying? You come against it in the opposite spirit. So, 
You bind whatever it is, but then you loose whatever you need, which is usually the opposite of that which has come against you. And when you bind it, you need to pray that it comes to nothing. You need to pray that at its very roots, it is cursed. And that it withers away and it comes to nothing. It comes to zero. And if it has been sent to you, that it gets sent back. That it goes, turns 180 degrees, and marches right back to where it came from. You send it back. Okay? Hear me. When you get something in the mail, you don't have to receive it. Sorry. You don't have to accept it. Okay? When something has been sent to you, special delivery, and you have to sign for something, you say, I'm not signing for that. I'm not receiving that. See, so many of us spiritually, we've just received it. We've accepted. It's come. It's been delivered. And we think, oh, I've got to have this. I've got to receive that. I've got to accept that. You can say, I'm not accepting that. I'm not believing that. You see, when the spies, is this okay? I'm preaching now. I'm going to be done. And then we're going to worship and the service will be over. Okay? So I'm doing the preaching now at a different place than I normally do it. Are you with me? So what you and I have to do is we have to realize that when certain things, and listen to me, folks, the enemy is all about sending you things. He's going to send you things to see if it sticks, to see if you'll receive it. That's the way that the spiritual world works in both the good and the evil. God is sending you things all the time, too, to see if you will receive it. That's why you and I need to be in a place where we are able to receive what God wants us to receive. But we're also at a spiritual place where we recognize I don't have to accept what the devil is trying to get me to accept and receive I reject it I refuse it I send it back I'm not even going to give it the time of day I I I rebuke it I command it to go I command it to go you have to command it to go in the name of Jesus and on the authority of the word of God and the blood of Jesus Christ it has to do an about face and go It has no place. It has no authority. It has no place in your life. And you don't have to be subject to it. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. And here's what happens. The devil will even try to make some things manifest so that you feel like I have to just deal with it I have to just learn to cope with it where is that in the word of God it's not there it's not there you and I have authority and we must utilize that authority and take charge and take control of it here's what I'm trying to get across to you earth moves first heaven responds heaven has done everything that needs to be done and has put in place everything that needs to be put in place and has set in motion everything that needs to be set in motion and now waits on us to pray to ask Jesus said, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He didn't say, you'll receive it. It'll be open to you. But you don't have to do anything. No, you have to ask. You have to seek. You have to knock. Okay? Part of my teaching a couple weeks ago was sometimes you have to You have to bombard heaven. Remember when Jesus gave the story about the unjust judge and the 
and the, and the woman who was a widow, and she came to him, and she wearied him. And Jesus said, listen to what the unjust judge said. He said, I'm going to give her what she's requesting, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. And then Jesus said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night. Jesus said, I tell you, he will avenge them and will do so speedily. So what you and I needed to be is relentless in our crying out, in our praying, in our authority. Relentless in bombarding heaven. Relentless like Jacob who said to the angel, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I will not be refused. It exhibits a level of faith that demands God's attention, that he responds to. And you and I need to understand that if we move, if we act, For every action, there is a, a reaction. So when you put it in motion and you act, God re-acts. God responds. You see, Jesus in different places in the gospel he goes about and he's doing all these things but what gets his attention is when somebody moves toward him in faith and he stops and he recognizes it he stops and he recognizes listen listen let me have my one year bible it's just flood oh i got it right here never mind ha 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 just testing you. Today's reading. Let's go right to April 15th reading. New Testament, Luke 17. As a matter of fact, I won't read this out of my... I'm going to ask him to put it on the screen upstairs. Luke 17, verse 11. And now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, this is today's reading, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice. They called out in a loud voice. So let me reenact. Jesus! Master! Have pity on us! When he saw them, He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Stop right there. Another example, again and again, over and over. That earth moves, heaven responds. Earth takes step one, heaven step two. The lepers see Jesus and cry out. They make a step. They do something. They say, Master, have pity on us. Jesus responds to that. Now I want you to see what Jesus tells them. Look at that. Go show yourselves to the priests. Well, you don't want to do that. You go show yourselves to the priests. As a leper, you're going to be called unclean. You're going to be banished from the culture and society, which they'd probably already done. He's asking them to do something that is totally the opposite of what they would want to do as lepers. Go show yourselves to the priests. I don't want to show myself to anybody. I have leprosy. I'm trying to cover it all up. 
He's getting them to do something that is unlikely for them to do. God will sometimes ask you to do the unlikely. It may be the, the very thing you don't want to do, but in your going is your cleansing. In your going is your breakthrough. In your obedience is God's moving in your life. And notice it says, as they went, as they moved, heaven moved. As they went, they were cleansed. As the priest stepped into the water, the Jordan parted. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. If you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, it will be open to you. If you fast, God will move in unbelievable ways. If you have faith, it shall be done to you. Are you, catch, are you understanding this? See, this is why many times in church services, I ask people to make a move. Get out in the aisle. Come to the altar. Why? Because if earth moves, heaven will respond. And the reason is because God has laid it all in place. He's put it all in place. Now all we have to do is do the right things to activate in our lives what he has put in place and what his word has promised. Let me segue into something. Back to Joshua, priests, dipping. I wish I had time. It just stinking clock. This is dangerous ground. You start doing that. Listen, here's what happens. So they cross over. A victory. A victory, right? Jordan parts. They all cross over. Now the battle begins. Now it's time to take Jericho. But God has specific directions. The commander of the Lord's army shows up to Joshua. You know what he says to him? He says to Joshua, in Joshua's first encounter, he says the very same thing that was said to his mentor upon his first encounter. What God said to Moses is what the commander of the army says to Joshua. And it is, take off your sandals. Because where you are standing right now is holy. Sometimes we're at places and we don't know how sacred or holy it is. I'm going to use that as the launching pad for the up conference on Friday night. Don't miss that service because that's where I'm starting with the teaching on Friday night. That passage of scripture. Because it has to do with leadership and some important things about it. But hear me. He then tells them what to do about Jericho. It's unorthodox. Totally unorthodox. But they can be assured of victory if they will do it. Walk around the perimeter of the walls of Jericho. On the seventh day, Do it seven times. At the end of the seven times, shout, I will remove their protection, and then you'll go in. And he says to them, everything in there belongs to God. Don't touch it. 
Don't take it for yourselves. It is appointed for destruction. It is a, and he says, it is an offering to God. So they do what God told them to do. They march. They're quiet for seven days. I believe they're quiet because they've, God didn't want to hear this. He'd heard that for 40 years. I don't need any more complaining and all that mess. You just shut up. March around the building. Be quiet. I got it under control. <laughs> too much of that. Or as my dad would say, too much lip. That's what he calls it, too much lip. Just march, just march. See, sometimes all you have to do is just march. See, what they didn't understand was the prophetic. See, that's why I, sometimes I ask you to do things, too, as a prophetic declaration they probably didn't even realize it but what they were doing was prophetically marching around the walls shaking the foundations as they are going preparing the way for the victory that God was about to give them okay then they shout they go in they do what God what the commander of the of the army says to do they save Rahab and her family because she had hid the spies when they came in to survey the land. They go out. Everybody's happy. Everybody's wonderful. Everybody's celebrating. Now it's time to go on to the next battle. A little town called Ai. Two letters. Ai. Ai. Okay? And they send out some spies to see what kind of battle they're in for and the spies come back and they encourage Joshua and say Joshua don't send the whole army this is a little pitiful town just send a few of us we can take it no problem so Joshua does he just sends a small group to take the city and they get whipped they get whipped so Joshua comes back. You like that, didn't you? You like that. Joshua comes back, and he falls on his face. Oh, God. I can't believe you've done this to us. You've led us into this land. You promised you'd give it to us, and look what's happened to us. And you know what the Bible says that God said? God says to Joshua, what are you doing? Get up. <laughs> well, that's exactly what he says. God says, get, it, get up. Get yourself up. And let me paraphrase. Can I paraphrase what God said? Let me use liberty that I think is, is within bounds, that won't violate the word of the Lord. But he told Joshua, in essence, Joshua, you can pray to me all day, but if you don't do certain things the way I've asked you to do them, no amount of prayer will fix that. Listen, you cannot persuade God through prayer, through any amount of giving, through any service, spending all week at the church, serving in the house of God, if you don't do what God told you to do initially. And he said to Joshua, he said, there is an accursed thing among you. And that's why you guys got defeated. Get the accursed thing out of my sight and out of your midst. Then I'll move. Oh, that's the problem. So Joshua starts to go fishing. He takes them tribe by tribe. One of the tribes is chosen, takes them clan by clan. 
one of the clans is chosen family by family one of the families is chosen all of the men in the family one of the men is chosen Achan I feel it already what a what a name for that scenario Achan A-C-H-A-N Achan he caused a huge aching among the Israelites they were not going to be victorious and then when Joshua started to interrogate him he said yeah yeah I, I went in there I saw the wedge of gold I saw the beautiful embroideries he said I took it I took it and I put it in my tent and I buried it in the middle of my tent Joshua says to some of the guys standing by I said go check out go check out his tent they go to his tent they find it. there it is buried there Here's what I want you to understand about the principle of what happened there. When they crossed over into that land, Jericho was the first fruits of their increase. And God said, that belongs to me. Don't take anything. It's going to be given to me as an offering. I'm going to receive that. And you know what? The whole taking of the town of Jericho and giving everything to God, devoted to God, is an illustration of the tithe. It belongs to God. Don't touch it. Give it completely to God. And then when they took care of business and they took care of Achan and they took care of getting the accursed thing out, then God said, now go. Then they went. Then they were victorious. But hear me, folks. And I'll come back to what God said to Joshua. You can pray all day. You can fast. You can read God's word. You can serve in ministry. But unless you do what you're supposed to do, you are neutralizing the effects of all that which could accomplish much. That's why, and I want you to understand, that's why I have such a strong conviction about the tithe. I have such a strong conviction about that because that is serious business to God. That's the difference in, in Israel's day between victory and defeat. And many times in this day, it's the difference between victory and defeat for people because it has such a stronghold. If you'll learn to release it and you'll learn to give it to God and don't touch it, it belongs to God. Folks, God will move. This is what I'm saying to you. See, when earth moves first, then heaven responds. If you will, hear me, listen to what God said. God said, if you'll take the accursed thing, get it out of there. It's devoted to me. Give it to me. It's devoted to me as an offering. If you'll do that, then I'll move and you can defeat the people of the land. But you have to move here so I can move here. When you don't move here, then I can't move here. Now that's God's way of, he has restricted himself by moving based upon our obedience. Do you understand that? Okay? So listen, folks. It's, it has, it's not about money. It, it really isn't. It's about our hearts and giving to God what belongs to him. And it's all about, if you leave with anything today from this service, it's about earth moving first, then God moving. See, that's why it's so important for you to be in the house of God today. You just being here. Why? Any of us could have been doing any numbers of things. And I got up early this morning, looked outside, it's cloudy. I'm going, wow, what a great day to snooze. But I decided to get my carcass up and to move. See? Because I believe that as I have moved today in the first day of the week, given to God the first fruits of my week, the rest of my week is going to be blessed. Listen, yeah, every single one of you, hear me today, because you moved first, God's going to move in your week. I know it as sure as I'm standing here. I can tell you that with confidence. Expect 
this week, tomorrow, Friday. It doesn't mean that you're not going to encounter problems. It's going to mean that God's going to be with you in everything you do. That God's going to walk with you in everything you do. He's going to give you wisdom this week. Call on Him. Ask Him. Whatever you need, see? You have not because you ask not. If you need it, ask Him. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. When you need wisdom, ask. He said, let, any, let, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally. See, when you ask God, he doesn't just give you a little bit. He gives you liberally. So ask him, ask him, ask him. Because you've moved first. God's going to move. Now, this week, move. Make some spiritual movement by praying. By praying, if you, you know, look, hey, I, I, I have pity on, on you if you're not a morning person. Okay? I'm a morning person. Actually, I can go both ends. That got me in trouble because I got sick one year really bad. But I can do it on both ends. But I'm pretty much a morning person. My wife, she does, she's never seen the sunrise. I introduced it to her one morning. I said, hey, let me show you something. She had a certain one in one of her surgeries she had to go through because of the breast cancer that she had. We got in surgery, and when we were in the doctor's office and they were lining it up, I laughed my head off. She looked at me. She knew exactly what I was doing. And then she told on me. She said, you know why he's laughing? Because I have to get up at 530 to be at the hospital, you know. But night owl, she's all about it. She's a night person, man. That's when she's, you know. Some of you like that, don't you? Yeah. She's, that's when she's going really, really strong. I mean, it kicks into turbo, you know, at 12 midnight. You know? I mean, we're just getting started here. I'm like, come on. You know? So if you're not a morning person, I know you're going, you know, you, you, if you're not a morning person, the snooze button is your best friend. I got that. Okay? You hit it ten times. You said it, I, I, don't, I don't understand this, but you said it for a half an hour before you really need to get up. I, I got that. I understand that. Okay, So you drag yourself, I mean, you wait till the last minute to try to get out the door. But listen, at the very least, instead of turning the radio on, on your way to work, pray. Just talk to God. Say, God, I, I really need you today. See, my wife told Terrell to start playing to make me shut up. That's, what, that's what's going on on the platform while I'm out here talking to you all. But on the way, pray. If you are a morning person, spend some time with God. Pray. You have not because you ask not. If you'll move first, God will move. Earth moves, heaven moves. Has this helped you today? Is this okay? All right, listen. What I want to do is I want to ask you today before you leave, okay, Get the, get the thing that's devoted to God out of your hands, okay? Learn to tithe. Learn to be a giver. Learn to pray. Learn to do what God's asked you to do so that he can move in your life. When you do those things, then God moves, okay? So, uh, worship team, if you'll just come out with whatever song you were going to do during the giving. This is our benediction here, okay? Um, I've preached... I feel released. I feel like I've given you the word of the Lord. It's not, it's not what, my sermon's up there, totally different than what I shared with you today, but I believe it was from the Holy Spirit. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask you to prepare to give of your tithe and, and your offering, whatever you've prepared. Or maybe if you haven't prepared, maybe the message has challenged you a little bit on tithing as I shared about that situation in the Old Testament but if and if you've already given some people give when they walk in the door and, and I understand that other people you may not see listen I want to clarify something you may not see people this isn't about seeing people who gives and who doesn't because let me say something to you um, uh, there are people that give when they walk in the door there are other people who give online so you'll never see them walk to the container. They do all their giving electronically, okay? But the reason we bring our offerings is because in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, that's what I see being done. People brought their offerings. They didn't pass plates. They didn't just, it wasn't kind of like the way it is today. They, they brought it before God. So I don't even really, I don't look and see who's giving. That never enters my mind. When we come to this part, I just start worshiping and magnifying the Lord. I thank Him that I have to give, that he's given to me so I can give. So 
What I'd like for you to do before you leave, and it may be right now, it may be after you give, if you haven't given yet. After you give, if you'll just go back to your seat for a minute while the worship team is leading us, just commit this day to the Lord. Commit your week to the Lord. Say, God, and let Him know, God, I've given you the first fruits of my week. I'm here on Sunday morning. I've given you my time. I've given you this, this, this time. And Lord, may it be an opportunity now for you to move in the rest of my week. If you have appointments this week, ask God to move in them. If you have decisions you have to make, ask God to do that. If you need something to be fixed at work, ask God to go before you and fix it before you get there. See, just commit all that to God. Okay? If you want prayer after, after you have given or if you've already given, then stay here in the altar and I'll just come and lay hands on you and ask God to touch you. The Spirit of God is moving here very powerfully today from the get-go of the 9 o'clock service. I believe he's still here. So, Father, I ask you to bless every person here today. Lord, I thank you that as we move, you move. You respond. You react to our actions. God, I pray the teaching would really be settled in every heart and mind. We take it with us from this house today. Hallelujah. God, bless this week. Oh, God. Let this week be filled with the blessing of the Lord. Let us see you, God, moving in different areas of our lives as we've given you the first of this week. As we give today, God, may you move supernaturally in our finances. May you preserve that which we have so that we don't have to lose money and spend money on things to be repaired, things to be fixed, things that need to be done. But God, may you preserve what you've given us. And then, Lord, bless your people with increase today. I pray, God, that you would also increase our faith. Let our faith rise so that our expectation would be high. For we believe this is a season of expectation and acceleration in the Spirit of God. So, Lord, right now, during this time, heal people. Set them free. Let their hearts be loosed. As earlier in the service we sang, we surrender all to you. God, move mightily, we pray today. Mm. In Jesus' holy name, let everybody say amen. Would you stand with me? Those of you who haven't given yet, you know, you can move to one of the containers around. Those of you who've already given, just begin to worship as the worship team leads us. There's not, an, there's not a formal dismissal. You're, you're free to go whenever you want to. If you want prayer, just come and stay down. Here at the front, the staff, the prophetic team will pray for you. We just believe God to minister His touch into your life. May the Lord bless you richly.